Good afternoon. This is the video format of Carrie's Corner. On April 23rd, the New York State government released these preliminary statistics. 13.9% of the population of New York State, about 2.7 million people, have at some point been infected with the coronavirus. This was the result of a large random test from people from different backgrounds selected from around the state. If I lived in New York City, my chances of being infected were about 21%. Conversely, in my area in upstate New York, my chances of infection were about 3.6%. In New York State, the death rate is 0.5%. Now, I cannot verify these statistics, but I believe that they are as accurate as they can be at this time. Even in light of my advanced years of life experience, otherwise known as my age, and my medical issues that raise the percentage somewhat, it's clear that I'm unlikely to get COVID-19. And if I do get it, I'm very likely to survive it. I do not mean to minimize the loss of the 23,000 people who have died in New York State, nor in any way diminish the depth of pain that's felt by their family and friends and loved ones that grieve their loss. The fact is that each one of those lost lives is a tragedy. My point is that my chance of dying from the coronavirus is very slim. I don't gamble but if I did, I would take those odds. Adding to the unlikeliness is I wash my hands regularly. I used hand sanitizer. I use masks. I observe social distancing to improve my chances even more. I don't go anywhere that is not absolutely necessary to go. I'm pretty much the poster child of social distancing. Still, this virus, the flu, a car accident, or some other virus could take my life unexpectedly at any time. So why the morbid talk about death? Well, there are two reasons. One was a question that I was asked this week, and the other is an article that I read about the early Christians during the plague. First, the question. The other day a man asked me if I was fearful of dying of the coronavirus. I told him, like all of us, I have concerns about my family, but I do not fear dying. I want to share with you my reason why. When Christ died on the cross, he took away the power of death. It's no longer something to be feared because we've been promised eternal life. We will leave this shell behind, but we will never die. That's a promise that was made to us as Christians. Hebrews put it in this way. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. That's in Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Because Christ took away the power of death through the cross as Christians we no longer have to live in fear of dying. Secondly, I read an article this week in a World Bible School publication quoting the church historian Eusebius as he was relaying a report by Dionysus, a bishop of Alexandria who lived about 200 to 265 AD. It's about the early Christians during a plague. And this is what it said in part. Most of our brethren showed love and loyalty in not sparing themselves while helping one another tending the sick, with no thought of danger, and gladly departing this life with them after becoming infected with their disease. Many who nursed others to health died themselves. The best of our own brothers lost their lives in this way, some presbyters, deacons, and laymen a form of death based on strong faith and piety that seems in every way equal to martyrdom. 
Our early brothers and sisters in Christ did not fear death. They believed they would overcome death in Christ, and so do I. Take all the precautions you can. Wash your hands, wear a mask, follow the guidelines, and practice social distancing. Do not do it out of fear of death. Do it out of love for others. Christians should never live in fear. To paraphrase Matthew 10:28, do not fear the coronavirus that can kill the body, but rather fear the one who can kill the soul in hell. I want to leave you with a passage of scripture from 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, which reads, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Choose faith, not fear. Thank you.